So you've heard about the Research Science Institute, or RSI for short, and you want to know my secret sauce on how I got in. Well, here's a quick disclaimer. One, this is purely an anecdotal experience. You know, I don't know exactly what happened and what goes on behind the scenes when they're selecting applications for RSI. This is purely my experience. I went to RSI in the summer of 2022, and so this is my experience starting way back in November, December-ish of 2021 when I applied, all the way now to the next year, November 2022. I hope this is helpful to give you guys some high impact, high value tips on applying to RSI and just to kind of clarify some aspects of the application process. But before I begin, I do want to give a quick shout out to Elizabeth's video. Elizabeth was a fellow 22 alumni and um, I found out about her video while I was at RSI and, you know, it just it really clarifies a lot of aspects as well of the application process. And so I recommend checking out her video after, of course, finishing watching mine. And so let's begin with question number one, which is to list some major awards, activities, and accomplishments in STEM. And so I kind of approached this question with a very um, narrow focus at the start with research and science fairs. Everybody's profile is different. I met people at RSI who were, you know, ISEF winners. I met people at RSI who are in USABO and IMO and all sorts of other STEM Olympiads and competitions. And doing great things. And then also there were people on the humanitarian side of things, social aspects, um, creating great progress in uh, in activism related fields and, and social related fields. And so there's so many things you can apply to with RSI. It's not just about STEM, but being someone in computational biology with experience in AI, um, a lot of my research in high school or a lot of my work in high school has been focused on that comp bio research and so that's what i started with so i listed some awards for my research these were just some titles that i got um, from winning various science competitions and i also listed some of the science fairs i competed in at the time um, i had competed in the national jshs competition and i had won first place um, and uh, at the at the national level in the oral presentations and then also i was a three time ISEF finalist. I didn't get the results of the, the 2022 ISEF fair by then, um, but I just listed that I was a finalist. And so I had gotten the third grand award the year prior. And then also I was a Broadcom Masters finalist. So uh, as you can see, just try to give like a general idea of what types of competitions, if you participated any, were. Um, because in the question, it does ask for, you know, Olympiads, academic bowls, math competitions, science fairs. So make sure you are listing those if you've even participated in them. You don't have to have awards because it really does help to show that you have some prior experience in research and you have that potential for at RSI to conduct really high level uh, um, graduate level research. And so in addition to this, in this question, I also talked about some of my science publications. Um, so I'm not going to, you know, list exactly what I put in the question as I am also currently applying to colleges, uh, but I'll give you a general idea of what I put. I put like various preprints that I had um, that I had submitted and then which journals I was submitting those preprints to uh, for, you know, actual publication and which author I was. Was I co-author or was I first author? So um, to, just to give an idea of my past experience in research as well as that was a big part of my high school journey. Um, another thing was conferences. If you participated in, you know, research conferences published an abstract or conference paper, that definitely counts as well. That is research, and so you should list it here. Um, I also developed some apps, and so um, these were just kind of like web apps or maybe even mobile apps. List, you know, what you created, maybe just, you don't need to give like a huge description of that because there are places in the essays where you can, you know, dive deeper into that. But I just listed, you know, like how many users I had, um, maybe like what type of revenue I was earning to give an idea of the impact I was creating through my apps. Um, and then also I wasn't an Olympiad kid. Um, I did take the use of bow just for fun one time or twice, but you know, uh, everybody's profile is different. And so there are going to be, I bet a bunch of Olympiad people watching this video. So I think it's a good idea to also list what Olympiads you did, what scores you got, like whether it was the National Science Olympiad or if it was like USABO, um, Chem Olympiad, uh, Math Olympiad, all Physics Olympiad, all of that stuff. Um, so that was that question. And then the next question um, was kind of about non-STEM awards and activities there. And so I talked about really just what I did. This is um, something I guess you should kind of take with a grain of salt because this is literally just 
my high school experience. And so yours is going to be different. Um, and so mine focused around some leadership, some entrepreneurship, again, with some of those apps that I built. Um, and then also some volunteer work that I conducted through my nonprofit organization and at some other organizations in my local community, um, school and district awards and academics. Um, you know, maybe did you receive some kind of honor roll or uh, now that I'm a senior, I, I have like the um, what is it called? National Merit and AP Scholar and all of those things. If you have those like earlier on as a junior, uh, make sure to list those there as well, because those are like non STEM specifically. They're just general academic awards. And then athletics and clubs. Athletics was also a pretty big um, piece of my ECs in high school. I did track um, now my fourth year in track and field. And so that was a big part. And I listed various clubs I was a part of as well. And so now let's get into the core of the RSI application, which I believe is the research. At the end of the day, it is the Research Science Institute. And they're trying to, I think, gauge your experience in research and your potential as a scientist and engineer, or mathematician or whatever. And so um, they ask for, you know, a br briefly describe the topic of your most significant or mo most research, recent research project, excuse me. And so um, I talked about my um, most recent research work, which also happened to be my most significant. This is the project project that I actually ended up winning the Regeneron Young Scientist Award at ISEF, uh, International Science and Engineering Fair for. And so I think that this was definitely uh, my strongest project. So I talked about what I did, a brief description of that, and then how many hours I worked and how long I worked for. And so I actually did a different approach to this question than I think a lot of other people did. And so when I was applying to RSI, there was some, uh, after I had applied, actually, I started to look into it a little bit more. And I found that, you know, people had created some guides online and whatnot. And so I had seen that they had talked about, you know, listing, uh, like kind of not a brief description, a very long description of, uh, of your past research. And we're like kind of encouraging people to do that. And so I'd say, you know, when you read the question, give your interpretation of the question. So don't be pressured to write this much one paragraph. You can write two paragraphs if you think that that is briefly describing and that sums up your research well. I just happen to do this. So really do, um, again, take this with a grain of salt and consider what your application is. Consider what your research is. You know, go back, read these questions and what is the first thing that pops into your head? So just use this as a guide and just um, you know, a general sense of, of, of what you can do, but not what you should do. Um, so next, publications. This section was optional. You can list one research publication or a preprint, um, and so they will kind of review that. And so nobody knows what they're looking for in that review, but just list kind of your more, most significant research preprint. But you don't have to have this. Again, there's so many uh, amazing students in Olympiads um, and other parts of STEM that have performed and demonstrated just and have done amazing things in high school. And so research is not the only thing. I'm just sharing this experience as a kind of like a research heavy student who competed in ISEF and a bunch of those fairs. So now articulate why the research fields chosen on the previous page are intriguing and exciting for you. So I think this is one of the most kind of um, confusing questions in that I see like there's a bunch of people online who are always asking about what research fields they chose. And I've had uh, a couple of students like in my local area um, and people just emailing me who are like asking about this question specifically. So I thought I'd like touch on this a little bit. Um, so my two research fields were biology and computer science. So um, this again is like I, I've seen a couple other people's applications and they did completely other uh, different things and they got into RSI. So um, regarding the research fields, I think you can be as narrow or as broad as you want. I kind of interpreted this as research fields like being overarching, like big things like bio, chem, physics, math. CS, those types of things. But I have seen some people list like comp bio as a research field and then something super specific like protein engineering within that subfield. And so, you know, interpret this the way that you think is best. Um, so I put bio and CS as my big sort of research fields and then subfields is comp bio and machine learning. Um, and so the reason why I did this is because it literally just tied into what I'm passionate about and what a lot of my research has been about. Um, and that's the research I wanted to do at RSI and continue doing. 
Um, so what I talked about in this essay was kind of how I got interested in these fields and how that led me to conducting research in those fields. Um, and then I talked about what's most exciting to me. So it asks about what are one or two of the most interesting questions or problems in that area. Um, at the time, this was really recent to like AlphaFold 2, I think, um, and like amazing innovations happening in, in protein design and protein engineering. And my research was also kind of on gene design, synthetic DNA engineering. And so that was really perfect for me to talk about those interesting questions that I ended up researching and that were also super popular in the field. Um, and then on the CS machine learning side of things, a lot of my research has been applying machine learning and using machine learning. Um, and so I talked about a couple of the most interesting things that I find in deep learning. It doesn't have to be related to your research because at the end of the day at RSI, you could be exploring something completely different. There are students who, you know, applied with a CS background and then got matched into a bio um, internship, a bio men mentorship. And so it's really about expanding the horizons at RSI and doing like really great work. But those that, but that work can be in a different field. So feel free to kind of talk about that. Um, and then what are your long range goals? Number two. Um, so again, this is, I feel like these are really personal questions and that's also kind of why I didn't want to share these essays. Cause I feel like it would confuse a lot of people if you were to see someone else's essay and you would kind of model your essay based on that. And I feel like these are really deep personal questions that you should just go with your gut on. And so for me, um, I just talked about the career that I was interested in. What would, what will I be doing in 10, 20 years? And so for me, I thought that, uh, a lot of my research experience, I definitely want to continue that in my career um, and make an impact on society. Like I want to be known as, you know, someone who cured cancer in the future and is saving like so many lives and making an impact on the world. And so um, that's exciting for me. And so I talked about that in my career, um, a career choice of like kind of exploring research further, but also impacting people on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and so then I also talked, continued about my curiosity in science um, and the things that interested in, interested me in high school and why those would carry on perhaps to long range goals. Um, and then also service, um, because that was a big part of my high school journey. You may have seen me talk about like my scouting and Eagle Scout in some of the past questions. And so that's really had a big impact on me. I've been scouting for like eight or nine years and so I, I service and community service, helping out other people um, is essential to what I would want to be doing in the future. So I kind of combined all of these three into a career selection. But at the end, I did make sure to clarify that, you know, I'm a high school student. I don't know what my future is, is going to play out to be. I don't know what the next chapter in the book is going to be. And so although these are the guiding principles that have helped me select this kind of career, um, I don't you know, know specifically what my specialty is going to be. I don't know specifically what my PhD thesis is going to be, right? I'm just keeping the options open, but I want it to be guided by my curiosity and STEM and service and all those things I talked about. Hopefully that's a little bit helpful. I know I'm being a little bit vague, but it's intentional. Um, now, what activities and or hobbies demonstrate your leadership, creativity, and uniqueness? Again, guys, these are really personal questions. So just talk about what really demonstrates your uniqueness. Everybody is unique. Um, at RSI, there were like, you know, there was, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I just remember being so amazed. Like every single person I would meet um, on the surface, some people were like a little bit shy about like, you know, sharing their, their background a little bit. And then as you got to know them, they would be like, oh yeah, you know, I just casually did this. And I'd be like, that is so cool. Um, and so for me, some of these unique aspects were my Discord business. Um, I guess I can talk a little bit about that. Discord is basically the social media platform, um, discord.com. And so I started using Discord as just like a user back in uh, when I was like 12 or 13, uh, 13 actually, 13 years old. And so um, that kind of blossomed for me in, in creating apps for Discord and creating bots for Discord. And that was a big part of uh, my extracurriculars and the creativity aspect that it's talking about. Then Eagle Scout, that kind of just directly answers the leadership aspect for me. Um, being sen senior patrol leader of like 100 scouts, leading them at 
some various events, organizing meetings, things like that. Um, and then YouTubing, I know this is my, um, kind of my, my second YouTube channel. So at the time you're watching this, this probably has like five subscribers, but I do have a couple other YouTube channels that I own. And that was a big part of creativity. Again, I love like making videos, um, and sharing information with the world. Like a lot of my content has been like this type of video where it's educational, informative, like technology teaching type of things. And so, uh, I kind of talked about that for my creativity as well. And then science activism, I feel like this doesn't really fit into any of those three specifically, but um, I've been like a speaker for science. Uh, I don't know. Let me go back to the very beginning when I type out my words. Yeah. So uh, Time Magazine's 25 Most Influential Teens. I when I got that title, I was invited for like a bunch of different talks and conferences and things like that. And so I've continued those through high school as well. And um, that's been a big part of, of kind of who I am and wanting to shape the future of science. Uh, so I talked about science activism work that I've been doing. Uh, next question, describe your participation in ECs or community outreach activities. So I felt like some of this had overlap with this question. And so I do remember when I was looking at these questions, I made a book, like I recommend outlining. Um, that's been a huge skill that I think is, is just really important for writing essays. And now that I've been in the college application process as well, outlining is really, really helpful because then you don't get the, the scenario where you're like, oh wait, I just kind of talked about the same activities in both sections. So I split mine into two. Um, I had a bunch of activities to be honest in high school. I've been very, very busy. Um, and so that's how I had the opportunity to split those. But I've seen some other students like for number three, they'll list like one or two activities and talk about how within those activities, they were able to cover all of those three tenets of leadership, creativity, and uniqueness. And then over here, they list their other one or two activities. So you don't have to have a bunch of them. Um, for me, I was just trying to cover all the stuff that I've done, because I think that each activity brought kind of a unique flavor to who I am and kind of represent and showed some aspects of my personality. And so one of them was speaking again, kind of linking back to that science activism a little bit. Um, speech and debate um, has been a pretty decent activity of mine. Then there was track and field again, a big activity. Uh, I spent a lot of time throughout high school training for track and then scouting again. Um, I talked about a different aspect of scouting. So that was more about the service oriented things. Whereas for this question, I talked about the leader oriented things like um, leading scouts and organizing stuff. Whereas I, here I talked about my Eagle Scout project and community service I participated in and then singing um, and what I like to do kind of, this is more of a fun activity just uh, in, in my free time. I love to sing and I'm part of some choirs. And so how did you hear about RSI? What aspects most appeal to you and why did you apply? This is purely anecdotal. I've seen some questions that are like, uh, some responses successful for RSI that are 750 characters or like under. And so this, I wrote closer to 2000 because how I heard about RSI was a little bit, um, I guess, non-traditional. Like it wasn't through a Google search. It wasn't through one person. It was kind of interesting how I came to know about RSI. I'm not going to share that again because I don't want to mold your response on how you write this question. This is purely anecdotal and that's all I'm going to say on this. Um, and so those are some of my tips on RSI. Uh, this red circle here is showing Elizabeth, who is part of my counselor group at RSI. If you do get in, I hope you have an amazing experience. Go check out Liz's video, um, which I will link down in the description or comment section below. Feel free to ask any questions below, and I'm going to be happy to answer those. Um, and okay, Risha from the future here. I start rambling, so I'm cutting this off. Go watch Liz's video, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.